Good morning. Welcome back to the 2023-2024 school year. I'm here this morning, part of the eight hour update to talk to you about a couple of different things. The first one is the use of a telephone while driving the school bus. In plain and simple, it's two words, not allowed. While we can get used to the fact that in our cultural, many people do drive and talk on the phone, or God forbid, even text on the phone while they're driving, plain and simple is something that is not safe and it is not allowed. Let's go ahead and review a couple of things. First of all, the federal guidelines and then the Laurel County District rules regarding this. The Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration is the agency that has created the guidelines for cell phone usage by commercial motor vehicle drivers. Mobile phone restriction. The FMCSA restricts the use of all handheld mobile devices by drivers of commercial motor vehicles. This rule restricts the commercial motor vehicle driver from holding a mobile phone to make a call or dialing by pressing more than a single button. Fines and penalties. Using a handheld mobile home phone device while driving can result in driver disqualification and a $2,750 fine for drivers. Disqualification, multiple violations of the prohibition of using a handheld mobile phone while driving a commercial motor vehicle can result in a driver being disqualified by the FMCSA. But keep in mind, Laurel County restrictions are even more stringent than that. Laurel County does not allow cell phones, can never be used by a dress driver, even with a Bluetooth device, unless it has been stopped in a secure location, and that is with or without students on board. And those rules are found in your handbook that you've been given this morning. So we all need to make sure that we adhere to this policy. It is something that we definitely want to keep the kids safe. And there's no way of doing that if we're trying to use a phone or certainly texting is a whole nother matter. Let's keep them safe and stay off of our phones while we're driving. One last thought on the use of cell phones on the bus. It certainly is no denying that Trying to use a cell phone is a distraction and something that can easily be avoided. There are no phone calls or no texts that are so important that they need to take your focus away from keeping the kids safe and driving your bus safely. So let's make sure that we're doing the right thing and are keeping our kids safe and are staying off our phones. The second thing that I want to talk to you about today is the lab test on the pre-trip. Of all of the parts of the pre-trip, I think the lab test is probably the one that is most neglected. And I feel pretty confident in saying that because it is one of the things that KDE has said when they come out and check buses at bus garages, the most common reason for them downing a bus is because of air leaks. And if we were doing the lab test correctly, we would not have that situation. In fact, when KDE came to our bus garage this last spring, I know of at least one, and there may have been more than one, that was downed because of air leaks on the bus. So we want to go over the procedures. Some of you, it may have been a long time ago that you learned these. And we want to go through and explain them so you understand the importance of every step of the lab test. So the first thing on the lab test is you want to make sure that your air pressure is built up to 120 PSI. Once you've done that, then apply pressure on the service brake. You want to begin the lab test 
with the bus running and pressure built up to its maximum of 120. Then you go ahead and put your foot on the brake and you notice when you put your foot on the brake it now loses some of that pressure. You want to have it at the maximum pressure when you start out because it's obviously easier to tell if there's a leak the more pressure that there is on the system. The next thing that you want to do is turn the bus off. You then turn the key off. The purpose for turning the key off is so that when you lose pressure, the air compressor doesn't kick back in and start trying to build the pressure back up. Then after that, you will turn the key back on in the on position without restarting the bus. Step two, you then turn the key back on. And turning the key back on, this allows when the time comes that you start pumping down, that the alarms will be able to go off. In some of our buses, which are particularly the Bluebirds, the air pressure will not show if you don't have the key back on, which will lead to your next step. You will then release the parking brake by pushing the parking brake button. You then push the parking brake in. You cannot check air pressure without having the parking brake in because the parking brake is already holding the brakes. And if you don't put it in, you won't know, you won't have the air pressure on those brakes. At this point, you'll be checking for leaks. With pressure applied to the service brake, you should not leak more than three PSI per minute. You then go, you then go and start checking to see for leaks. You're looking for leaks of three PSI in a minute. Now the reality is because of the way that this dial is, if you see any leak at all, it probably is an issue. But you want to wait and make sure you have no leaks, no movement of the needle with your foot on the brake. After the minute has passed, you'll begin pumping your brakes. You should see a visible alarm on the dash and hear a constant audible alarm when you get down to 60 PSI. And now we'll start pumping your brakes down. And when your brakes get down, when your air pressure gets down to 60 PSI, you see, should see an audible, you should hear an audible alarm and you should see the visual alarm on your dash. You then continue pumping the brakes down and the parking brake button should pop out between 40 and 20 PSI or at the manufacturer's specifications. You now will continue to pump your brakes and when you get down between 40 and 20 PSI on this bus, the parking brake will pop out. And there it just did. Now it's important to realize that one of the things it said or according to bus specification because if you are in a Bluebird bus it's not going to pop out at 40 like it did on this bus. It's going to go down probably all the way to 10 but that's okay because that meets the specifications of a Bluebird bus. The important thing is that that button does pop out when you get down to what the manufacturer says it should be at. And that would conclude your lab test. And that concludes the lab test.